As winners of the 2008 Leopold Conservation Award, it's very much an honor for us to be, as a family, to be uh, recognized for uh, the conservation efforts that we've made over the last uh, several generations. We've got four generations here today that have lived on the ranch and made a, a living off of it for that long. We are very proud of uh, the things that we've been able to do from a conservation standpoint, realizing that in order for us to maintain a cattle operation and be sustainable in the future, that it's going to take some conserva take conservation efforts to uh, be able to uh, continue to operate as a ranching entity. Our ranch was established here in 1856, so we've been here for uh, seven generations with the grandkids that you've seen in the photographs. Why uh, we're uh, a long time family that's been here. Uh, my great grandfather was actually the first white permanent settler here in, in Rush Valley. So uh, it's been home for a long time for us. We are basically a cow calf operation, a little different than most Western ranches because we operate basically on private ground and it's a pretty close operation. We don't have to travel a lot to. Uh, to be able to take care of uh, of our cattle and, and range, and uh, so it's a, it's a pretty handy operation. I may be more optimistic than a lot of people nowadays, but I think that there's a, a future for us in a cattle operation here. Uh, I don't know what you guys think. You, uh, I think, I mean, I think the the feeling that Brian and I have is that that what we have here is a, a piece of, of history that um, we've agreed that we, we won't sell in our generation that we're going to keep around. So I guess we're going to have to be in the cattle business. But the way we look at it now is um, even though we both have jobs off the ranch, that it's a place to come home to and teach our kids the values that, that we feel are the most important uh, for that's going to help them later in life. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a big part of... Uh, what makes our ranch what it is is, is the improvements and the and the conservation practices that we've put into place, and we realize that we just have to continue doing that to make the place better, make the place more profitable, more, more economical, and it's just something that we can't just uh, ignore and and run cows on without uh, conserving what we do have. There's something in you that makes you want to do it. It's it's not easy it's work. A lot of hard work. Yeah. <laughs> and if you were if you were smart business minded, you'd probably find something else to do because, I mean, there's a payoff there, and and you got to be very aware of what's going on with the business end. But it takes a it takes a a different breed to to want to do it every day. I think. In order to be sustainable and in order to continue growing and, and running an operation, you've, you've got to have conservation. You can't just go in and, and year after year abuse and overgraze uh, property and, and not uh, be able to, to eventually have that ground not giving you a return. So, you know, to be sustainable and to, to keep this, this ranch going, uh, we're, we're going to have to continually always be conserving. For me, even in my profession as an ag teacher, it allows me a, a place to to relate and talk to kids about how we need to conserve and take care of our of our land. And and, and if we don't take care of it, nobody else is. And so we've got to we've got to do that. Our biggest resource concerns here on this place are uh, being able to maintain healthy grass stands. We. Uh, live in a, a, a juniper forest basically and uh, the encroachment of juniper due to the to in large part to the lack of fire is a, a challenge for us to keep uh, uh, grass stands uh, established and uh, functioning well also which ties into uh, watershed concerns uh, and and water we live on a desert so uh, anything that we can do to enhance the uh, quality and quantity of water on our on our ranch is uh, of benefit to not only us as uh, for our livestock but also the wildlife and also our community i think as as stewards of the land we have a responsibility to uh, be able to share 
our successes and failures. I've been involved in several commodity organizations and also in conservation organizations. Uh, we've been able to make presentations. Uh, we've had a lot of interest in what we've done over the years. I think uh, conservation partnerships are, are, are very important. We've had the opportunity and the good fortune of being able to cooperate with a lot of people. Uh, NRCS, uh, the GIP program has been helpful to us. We've been able to finance our operation and a lot of our improvements through the ARTL program with the state. We've just had a lot of help and a lot of partners that we've been able to uh, accomplish the goals that we've set for, for our place. You know, if we're going to sustain our place, we've got to have a healthy range condition and uh, in reality all we can sell off of this place is is the grass we're grass producers and we need to run livestock to harvest that grass uh, we have no interest in uh, growing anything but grass on our place we certainly don't want to get into a situation where we're growing houses or anything else I had an uncle that uh, always talked about fire and and how it was so good for the land and uh, my grandfather talked about uh, uh, when he was born here in 1876 and grew up here that uh, the old timer said that there was grass up to a horse's belly and uh, in my time I just figured they ran rode some awfully short-legged horses because I never seen grass that tall however now through our efforts, we do have grass up to a horse's belly in places, and so it's been remarkable what we've been able to see, the changes, but those uh, folks that came before us instilled in me a, a real desire to, uh, to do what we could for the land to uh, uh, make it better for generations down the road. Thank you.